Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, I'm excited today because I'm going to be doing um, a collage spread and it is a collaboration with Konzi and um, also known as a Top Serenity Hill. Um, I'll make sure to tag her information down below so you can go watch her video as well. So we are using her prompt deck here and we pre-picked out um, three prompts to use for our um, projects today. And um, so our prompts are doodle, yellow, and masking tape. So this prompt deck is really great. I think there's about 60 prompts here for you to choose from. And a really fun way to do it is just put them in a bowl or um, a pouch or something. And then you can just randomly pick one. And that really helps you if you are um, prone to get stuck creativity and not know where to go next, what direction. That's a really great way. So I'll make sure to link that down below as well. And so you can go um, look at that on her Etsy page, I believe. That's uh, a printable you print it out and print it at home. So in preparation for this, um, I'm going to be setting a 15 minute timer. I'm working in my journal and the pages are about four by seven, I think. It's a really fun size. I like the tall pages. And I pulled out some supplies I think I might use that are inspired by those words. I don't know what direction I'm going yet, but since I am filming and I'm going to be setting a timer for myself. I do like to have my items right here where I can get to them. Um, and plus it's easier to have inspiration just right in front of you. So a couple things that I pulled out that I may use, of course I have just my drawing um, basic utensils. I have some different colored ones. I have a few different paints. Um, I have a couple different times of masking tape, washi tape, um, just scrap papers up here, a uh, printable of mine that I thought the colors would be really fun, some pre-done quotes, um, stuff like that. So it helps me to have those pulled out ahead of time. So I'm gonna, just going to set these right here and um, use, make sure to use these as inspiration. I'm not going to pull them randomly. Um, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. Let me set my timer and let's get going. All right, I've gone ahead and set my 15 minute timer. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this journal spread. Now it's looking way too clean right now to start. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add in some scribble marks being very loose and organic. If you have a problem getting these scribble marks, you know, if you're trying to be too intentional with your marks and movements, maybe close your eyes and just scribble a little bit on the page. What this does for me is just helps me to loosen up and not take the page so seriously. I almost mess it up to begin with so that it's okay no matter what I do on it next. I want to get some of that yellow color down as that is one of my prompts. I'm using one of my favorite paints from Golden. It's a fluid acrylic um, nickel azo yellow and I put too much of it on the page so just wiping off the excess on another piece of paper. As always, I try to link all of my products that I use down in the description below. If I happen to miss something um, or you don't see it, just let me know and um, I'll try to find that link for you. Adding in a few more scribbles, I'm going to come in with my Stabilo All Pencil and try to really grunge up this page. It's looking too clean for me right now and the perfect way to grunge up any page I think is your Stabilo All Pencil. And I dip that directly in water and now with a wet paintbrush, just moving that pigment across and around the page in a very organic fashion. One of the ways I like to do this is to pull that pigment and almost make marks on another spot of the piece of paper where you don't get the harsh lines from the Stabilo pencil. Now 
It is quite wet on my page now, so I'm going to hit that with a heat gun. And while I'm heating this, I'm also thinking about what I want to do next on the page. I added quite a bit of water and um, normally maybe I would just keep hitting it with the heat gun or move on, but with a set timer like this, it is difficult to work if your page is too wet. So I wiped some of that off with a paint rag. I'm deciding what I want to do on this page and this is one of my um, uh, handmade envelopes that I printed out using a scanned in um, digital print of my own original work and it's I love to make envelopes this way because they make a fun little statement. Next up using another one of my prompts I'm adding in some masking tape looking for a way to make this envelope stand out from the page a little bit. Sometimes putting something behind um, your work can help it stand out. Next up, I want to add some of those elements that I just added on the right page uh, to the left page. By doing this, it really helps um, to have some cohesiveness throughout your your spread and throughout your page. I never like to do the exact same thing on both sides of the page, but adding in some elements that are consistent really help everything to be cohesive. I'm looking through my hand carved stamps and seeing if I can pull out one to help me get a little bit more interest onto the left side of the page here. This is one of my stamps. It's um, a repetitive art mark stamp and it is available along with the others on my website that I hand carve and that will also be linked down below. I'm inking up that stamp just once and going to stamp a few different spots kind of randomly across um, both of those pages. This makes for a really quick and easy background um, that is also unique. You could also go in with, you know, a marker or um, a writing utensil of some sort to make those background marks, but this is a really quick um, method to get some of those marks down on the paper. I'm thinking that this envelope needs a little something because right now you can't even really tell that it was an envelope on the page. It just looked like that it was a piece of paper. So I took one of my little embellishments that I had pre-made that is a little golden paper clip with a bit of sorry ribbon tied onto it. I love to use these um, on envelopes like this or on the edges of the page or any little tuck in pockets or anything. Um, it really adds a, a fun aspect to the page. Just with my uh, normal glue stick, my Uhu glue stick, I put a good amount on the back side of that envelope. I want it to stick. It's a little bit thicker than normal um, since it's all folded like that. And now adding in some yellow washi tape just for a little bit of an accent piece and hoping that it might help that envelope to stay in place a bit better. I want to add a little bit of definition to that envelope, but I'm not thinking I want to grunge it up. So I'm taking just a little piece of a couple washi tapes there and adding it on. I'm toying with the idea of adding more than one of those paper clips, but in the end it just looks too busy. And so I'm going to just stay with the one. Next up, I know that I want something in this pocket of the envelope. I enjoy trying to create interactive elements in my art spreads. And a good way to do that is to have something in a pocket that you can pull out and turn over and look at. I'm going to make a little collage cluster here that's just made out of papers. And going to glue a couple of these papers together.
I like the size of it in there and I know that it will have to go in pretty straight so I can't get it much bigger than that and make it still functional for that pocket. I'm not quite sold on it yet so I'm going to try a couple other pieces of paper and see if I can just add some interest on to this little collage bit. When you don't know exactly where you want to go, it is fun to try out just different different pieces and different scraps of things that you have laying nearby. One of the things I didn't have very close to me and that I wanted for this um, was a little bit of thread and a needle. And I'm going to add some hand stitching on uh, to this little cluster. I think when you're stuck and don't know what to do, sometimes what's missing is texture. And it can be pretty difficult to add texture onto um, an art journal spread where typically it's, you think of it as flat. So adding stitching is a great way to add some of that needed texture. I'm tying off a knot here just so that I can get started with my stitching. I'm going to be very loose, very organic with what I'm doing. I'm not planning out very much ahead of time of how I want these stitches to look. Um, in this method, this is not to be uh, precise in any way. I'm going around the outside of um, that piece. I know that that's the side that will show the most. When you open the flap, that's what you'll see the most is that side. So. Each time I go to the back, I'm not necessarily making a um, new hole for my needle to go through, but reusing some of those holes, and that creates a bit of interest in that regard as well. If you haven't used or done much stitching in your work and you're not very familiar um, with this process, I encourage you not to be scared of it and just to go in and you can see how messy and loose this looks and you don't need to know the like official rules or anything to do hand stitching. Um, just be loose and organic and I love the way that that looks in the end. I think that that will look great coming out the side of the pocket there and I like the loose thread that I left and didn't cut it too close upon tying it off. It looks like that washi tape is coming up just a little bit. Uh, washi tape on its own is not always the most secure method for adhering things to your page so sometimes a little bit of glue is needed as well. I'm pulling out some quotes that I've made ahead of time. I like to keep these on hand um, so that I don't have to get up and cross my room to go to my typewriter. This makes it really easy um, when you are doing different um, art spreads to pull from um, that container already. I like to do that with a lot of different things, just like those embellished paper clips or um, tags and stuff of that sort. I know that if I just put that um, that piece down on the white background, it's all going to look a little too um, clean cut for me. So I'm just taking my paintbrush that was still a little bit wet from before and grunging up those edges. I had loosely scribbled my Stabilo pencil onto it. Um, nothing too precise. And now just with my glue stick, I'm going to glue that little quote onto the back side. This creates just a little bit of interest when you pull out that cluster from um, that envelope that it's not just the front side that has something interesting, but the back side does as well. Covering up that logo of that paint chipboard that says Lowe's on it and just with a little piece of washi tape that does the trick. Now I haven't used masking tape too much even though it was one of my prompts so I'm going to pull out a bit of masking tape and ripping it down vertically so I get little thin strips 
and going to use it to make it look like I adhered that quote with the masking tape. adding a few more scribbles just onto the front side. I don't think you can ever go wrong with more scribbles on your page. At this point, I think I really could be done with the page, but that last prompt of doodle, I did some scribbles there at the beginning, but I wanted to do something a little bit more that would really pay tribute to that prompt. So I love that X plus sign on the envelope. And so I want to bring some of that over to the left side. So I'm drawing out a large plus sign and a little one to go with it. And I think that will create some cohesiveness throughout the whole spread. I love to draw with my Stabilo pencil because of the grungy effects that you can get in it. You don't have to be um, super concise or good at drawing to draw with it because you can make it grungy um, afterwards. I end up not really liking that second little plus sign that I did. And so the nice thing about that is that the page was already grungy to start with. And so once it was all um, wet, I could just wipe off that pigment with my paint rag. Now that area is really wet and so before I could do anything else I need to um, dry that with my heat gun and now what I feel like the page is missing is just a few little highlights so I'm going to come in with my white uh, fine liner and this is um, white uh, paint mixed with a airbrush medium to create a more fluid paint um, so that comes out of the fine liner um, more easily and I could use a just a regular white pen to do this as well but since that area was already wet and not fully dry I knew it wouldn't mark very well over it plus this fine liner is fun because you can use it to make marks like this or to do um, really loose script fonts and stuff. And it is raised above the surface just a little bit. The downside can be that it takes a long time to dry because more of that paint is on the page than what a regular inky pen would be. But I love the look of it and you'll either need to hit it with your heat gun or just set this page aside for quite a while to let it dry. Don't just flip your page and get started on the next one uh, because it will all smear across the page. My 15 minutes is up but I wanted a few more highlights I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me make this spread as much as I enjoyed making it and make sure to go click over and watch Kanzi's spread as well. I'm sure it will be amazing and check out all the links below if you're looking for any of the products used or for the prompt deck from Kanzi. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and make some time to do something creative.